Hello, hello, hello. Um, hello to members of Win Punya Mai Masak Masak. How are you today? As promised, I am now making a video to show you how I make uh, the Bass Burn Cheesecake. It's not difficult to make, but you need certain uh, tips and pointers, okay, to do this. Um, before I begin, I would like to thank my two friends, Madame Ng Li Siang and uh, Madame Felicia Go, who has unselfishly given me their tried and tested recipe and all the tips. I'm sure they have gone through a lot of uh, trial and tribulations before they arrive at this, okay? so. I, I always feel very lucky, very blessed because my friends always give me the, the tried and tested ones, you know. Um, all these uh, uh, unsuccessful trials and all that, they would have gone through it. So, if you look above my head, you'll probably see a halo uh, spinning around it. That, that's how lucky I am. Okay, for burn, bus burn cheesecake. But before you... Uh, begin all this you usually like I have done I, I turn on the oven to 220 degrees Celsius right and uh, after all this is done we are going to put it into this 7 inch baking tin and we'll, be, uh, we'll bake it for 40 minutes at the end of 40 minutes I will usually because at the end of 40 minutes the top is the browning is already quite well, you know, uh, browned. So we will actually, what I do is I will put a piece of aluminum foil on top. I'll do tenting, put a piece of aluminum foil to prevent the top for, you know, continuing to brown. But at the same time, I need to uh, add in 10 minutes to actually cook the batter. So all together, 50 minutes. So 40 minutes open baking. Then the top is brown. We will put a piece of aluminum foil, tent it, and continue under 10 minutes. Okay, I'm using an Electrolux oven. I think every oven uh, could be different. So you follow this and you make adjustment according to your oven. If your oven tend to be hot, then maybe you can reduce instead of 220 you reduce to 210 and then after you make your first one then um, you'll be able to know the adjustment of time and temperature okay for the recipe uh, you need 500 grams of cream cheese okay 500 grams of cream cheese i have taken out the cream cheese cut it into pieces and left it out here to return to room temperature so that it's softer softer okay otherwise if you just take it out from the fridge it's too hard for you to spin and I'm using Philadelphia cheese and uh, you need 150 gram of icing sugar if you don't have icing sugar you probably can blitz your caster sugar and then uh, sieve it all right then you will need 15 gram, that is 1,5 gram of plain flour. You either use uh, 15 gram of plain flour or the recipe uh, also shows that you put 10 grams of flour, plain flour and uh, 5 grams of, of um, corn flour. But I use 15 grams of plain flour. This is uh, 2 tablespoons of lemon juice. This is 350 grams of dairy cream. Today I'm using this brand, My Leg Daily Whipping Cream. You can use any brand, Anchor, Embok, it's fine. But uh, My Leg is quite good because it has got 38% fat, which means that it's much more creamier. All right? And then you need five eggs. <laughs> you need five eggs and. Uh, these are freshly laid by happy, healthy, antibiotic-free hands. Well, you can use any egg, okay? But uh, it's written here as L size, but it's not that big. 
but I suppose it won't make a big difference. Like it's not very, they are not very large eggs, but that's fine. Okay, so to begin, we use the paddle, put in the cream cheese, ups. Put in all the cream cheese. Okay, I'm using I'm using kitchen aid and number one. Okay, if you look at it um, closely, you will see that the cream cheese is in blobs. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll spin this for one minute. At the end of one minute, I will add in the icing sugar. So we normally um, yeah, push it out a little bit. Lah. Otherwise, it gets stuck here like this. You, you actually just want to cream it. Kill is creamy, creamy, okay, but not like you are going to fluff it up. You don't want to fluff it up, that's why you use number one. At the end of the day, Busbun cheesecake uh, is actually very uh, smooth, like custard. So it's not really like you know, it doesn't, the texture is not like a cake. So you put number one and slowly cream it. So I usually cream it for about one minute, all right, before I add the sugar. Yeah, it's all, because I've taken it out from the fridge about two hours ago, so the cream cheese is actually quite soft. Yeah, it has been returned to room temperature, so it's a little bit soft. So it's easier to cream. If you take it fresh from the, the fridge, I believe it's not that easy to cream lah, because it's too hard, right? Yeah. See, you can feel that it is actually quite soft. Okay, let's cream it a little bit more. Earlier on, when we first put it in, you can see that it's in chunks. You know, in chunks. Now it's a bit smooth. So you can see that it is. It's quite smooth. Okay, after about a minute and it looks a bit smooth, we will add in the sugar, the icing sugar. And all the while, you just use one. Once you put in the icing sugar, you need to actually uh, do this again. Because otherwise, the icing sugar will have actually, you see, gone up to the sides. Okay, so you do this. Okay, and then um, after adding the sugar, I will keep scraping it down and the total 
amount of time that I, I spin this, paddle this, is about five minutes. Just about five minutes. But in between, I would definitely be scraping it down. Like I said, we don't want to fluff up. Not like, um, it's like you make a butter cake and all that, you, 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 you put it at quite high speed because you want the butter to fluff up. But when you make raspberry cheesecake, you really don't want that to happen. You just want to mix it into a smooth batter. That's all you want to do. Okay, we shall... Uh, see, you can see that it's quite smooth. Strip down. I have, I have uh, eaten or I have bought a uh, Basman cheesecake that is not smooth, not custard textured. It's rather uh, firm. And I don't know the actual reason for it, but I do believe maybe that person fluff it up. So it once you bake it, it's like a cake. It's firm. It's not supposed to be firm. It's supposed to be jiggly and... and and soft not soft it would have been you know but it's not firm like like normal um, cheesecake it's not firm like that yeah So you can actually see that the, it's getting smooth. You see, you can see that the whole thing is smooth. Okay. Keep scraping, uh, scraping it down because you will have sugar la, and uh, blobs of uh, cheese. You really don't want this blob of cheese at the end because... Um, if there are blobs of cheese, your custard after you when you cut it, you will see that it is not smooth. It's meant to be smooth. So you just scrape it down, scrape it down, scrape it down. Okay. So beat it for like five minutes altogether, including including scraping down time. All right. So it's all smooth and nice. I have timed it, like it's about 5 minutes, it's all you need. Mm. Then you first beat the cheese alone, it's just 1 minute, and then add in the sugar, let it paddle for another 5 minutes, and then we can actually add in the flour later, followed by um, lemon juice, followed by... Uh, eggs. Lastly, you add in the cream, the dairy cream. While the cream is being, is, uh, while the cheese is being creamed, uh, let me sh show you how you do this. You put a piece of baking paper in here and then you smoothen all these sides. Okay, you must smoothen all this side, press it in, press it in. See, the reason is if you don't press it in, let's say you have like that, you know, standing and all that. The batter, when you pour it in, will seep into the sides. Seep in, seep in, seep in, seep in. And then after you have baked it, when you remove the paper, the whole piece of cake will actually uh, drop off when you remove. However, if you do this, right, press it properly, 
it will actually make a nice some nice design on the outside on the outside of the cake and yet it won't have uh, slices of cake drop off so you just press it down like this okay so it's just neat like that so five minutes is up next is I'm going to add in 15 one five gram of flour Scrape down a bit. You can see, sorry, I'm blocking. It's smooth and nice, right? It's smooth and nice now. So, add in the flour. And uh, pedal it for a little while. Still at number one. Okay, the flour is mixed. We add in two tablespoons of lemon juice or lime juice is fine too. I've used lime juice and it is quite good as well. We shall add in the egg one at a time. Okay, one egg. Let it let it mix. You need to strip down. Because the the some of the egg yolks have gone off to the side. So we shall scrape it down. Okay. That's the first egg. Stir. Okay, it's all Nicely mixed, we put in the second egg. Okay, scrape it down again. I keep on using that one. Hmm, smells so good, you know. Philadelphia cheese is nice. Earlier on, um, the last few, I didn't, I wasn't able to get Philadelphia cheese, so I actually got Tatura, and it doesn't smell as good as uh, Philadelphia. Okay. That egg. down okay. Egg number four. Oops. Now you will see that there are some cheese that I haven't scraped down from earlier on. Don't scrape it down now because you don't want these little blobs to, to drop in and then you'll cause your cake 
after bake and then when you cut it you don't want you want it to be smooth right so you don't want those little blocks but we can actually sieve the batter Okay, that is five eggs already. This this brand, uh, the egg is actually very nice. Uh, the egg yolk is very orangey. I don't know. I I the only thing is is say is an L size, but I find the egg a little bit small. But so far it works pretty well here. Straight down again. Mmm. Looking good. Looking good. Next would be your 350 grams of dairy whipping cream. 350 grams is not actually 350 ml. I realize this is 350, right? It's gone to 375. But I weighed it. It is actually 350 grams. So we will slowly add in the whipping cream dairy whipping cream yeah remember that dairy whipping cream uh, is not sweet the non-dairy whipping cream is very sweet and it's creamier definitely okay we just put half of it in there okay and we stop this Okay, so what we will do is we will add in the other half of the whipping cream. Just stir it in. The reason why you don't want to whip it because you 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 like I said you this one this this one you this for this cake you don't want to whip it up because once you whip it up it becomes a cake and you know it won't be soft and and custard like so what we'll do is we will just uh, so we just mix it up remember yeah at the beginning you set your 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 oven okay and i have i have my friend um actually li siang and and felicia just told me they they've discovered that someone actually commented that you can actually leave this at the site for two hours before you bake it apparently is it gives you a better uh result gives you better result but i've not tried it before so And there is another report that says that you can actually leave it in the fridge overnight and bake it tomorrow. Oh, I don't know. But but for bus bun cheesecake, normally you bake it today when it's cool. You are supposed to chill it in the fridge and eat it chill. However, I can promise you, you do not have the chance to do that. The moment it's baked, it will be eaten up. Okay, um, if you want it really smooth, then sieve it. But I'm lazy, so I would not sieve it. I would just pour it in there.
in. Okay, you can see, look closely, there are some air bubbles. You are supposed to actually use a um, uh, toothpick or skewer to poke it. Okay, what you do is you take a skewer, you go round and round. You try to break up the air bubbles inside. Lah. Because the air bubbles, after you bake it, the air bubbles will make holes, right? When you make holes, when you cut it, it's not smooth and pretty. So, you do this. Stir it a bit. Break up some of the air bubbles. And if there are air bubbles on top, break it up as well. Hmm. Okay, we are done here. I will send this into the oven for 40 minutes, 220 degrees Celsius. After 40 minutes, I will put this piece of uh, aluminum foil, tent it for another 10 minutes. Altogether, I'll bake it for 50 minutes, five zero. okay? At the end of 40 minutes, according to my Electrolux, the top is already quite brown and I'm quite happy with the color already. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, it looks like it's brown enough. So, it's actually not yet 40 minutes, uh, but because it's brown already, so I have to pan it down, cover it in the middle rack. Okay, then I'll wait for another, when two minutes is up, I add another 10 minutes, altogether 50 minutes. Okay, uh, altogether 50 minutes up, I'm going to leave it in its own pan for 10 minutes before I lift it up and uh, pull down the paper and uh, let it cool completely, okay? So I won't take it out now. If I take it out now, it's too soft. Lah. Okay. Okay. I pull down the paper. So this is what I mean. Uh, when you fold it properly, when you pull it down, none of the cake will follow. If you like here, see this part here, a little bit, a little bit of this. When I pull the paper down, it comes down. So if you fold it properly, like what I showed in the beginning of the video, then you don't have a problem when you pull the paper down. So we'll wait for a while, and then I shall cut it and see. So it's very nice. You see, you can see there is a crater in the middle, right? Yeah. Look at the color. It's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Beautiful bus burn cheesecake. All you got to do is to put this and you have a beautiful... And then you can actually cut some strawberries and decorate on top. And there you go. A birthday cake, which I'm sure most people will like. Or even if you can say everyone might like it. Okay, so you can bake this. With this foolproof, failproof uh, video. And I hope after you bake it, you will post it in the uh, Win Punya Mai Masak Masak Facebook group. And then um, show us what you have done. Show us your success story. <laughs> you should be able to get it right because um, I've shown it very clearly. It's not... Is, I, I would say this cake is not very difficult to bake actually. It's one of the easiest to bake and yet it tastes great. So you are supposed to actually cool it and chill it overnight and eat it tomorrow. Yeah, like I just said, I don't think you can wait. So from now on, you'll be able to bake 
a birthday cake for just anyone okay all you need are some strawberries on top and you look beautiful okay right so let us see your cake later on all right thank you bye bye